Rio, Judge Fox, Fox, has to approve the Thomaston Board of Education regular meeting minutes dated September 12th, 2022, as presented. Are there any corrections? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Our recognitions. And Rotary Student of the Month this month was Connor Foss. He was honored at the Rotary Luncheon last Thursday and will be joining us later this month for the breakfast. And we will enjoy his speech. Do we have Connor's speech? Oh, there we go. Thank you, sir. Hello, well, my name is Connor Foss, and first I'd like to thank my family, my loving mother and father, for bringing me to this stage in life to where I can talk to all of you and uh, always motivating me. I'd also like to thank the Rotary Club for nominating me, and uh, it's a real honor to be nominated as Thompson's Rotary Student of the Month. And to Mr. Perucci, who has helped me in many ways, supporting me during hard times with my family, uh, even talking to Spencer and getting me a job at the high school and helping me throughout that whenever I had a problem and always, I always did, <laughs> always going to him first for uh, advice and asking for help. <clears throat> Your guidance has been invaluable and uh, has been really appreciated. Thank you. Uh, along with Mr. Perucci, I would also like to thank Mark Olson. He has been a cross-country coach, an indoor track coach, a outdoor track coach, and a pre-algebra and algebra two teacher. During my years at Thompson High School, Mr. Olson has not only helped me figure out algebra, which is a miracle, he has also coached me through six Berkshire League All-Star Championships. We are 2022, my team, I was the captain this year. We are 2022 Berkshire League champions for cross country this year. My years on indoor track, cross country and outdoor track, I think, as my mother has said, have truly transformed me from, as Ms. Rich would say, a devilish child. <laughs> transform me in, from an introverted ninth grader, I would say, to someone who is not afraid to step up and be a leader on a team. During my junior year, I became a captain of all three of these teams. Um, and this year, I, as I said, led us to a championship. And I hope to lead us for one, a state championship for indoor and another Berkshire League, and hopefully to state opens for track, indoor track. Since most of the team has been training together, we have, it's a small high school, we've been training together for almost six years now, all of us. It's been a very tight knit group. Uh, we have a, formed a strong bond, which has made it possible because of Thompson's close knitness, because of how we all sort of know each other. We've all met each other. We, we see Mr. Perucci, we see Mr. Perugini, we see everybody in the hallway, and they say hi to you. They ask you how your day is going and everything like that. So it feels like you're really a part of a community here. We're in a larger school. I would fear that that's not the same thing. Over the last four years, I've been taught many things by peers and teachers and things like that, uh, the time management, the value of prioritizing my responsibilities. Over this past year, I've begun working part time at the school like I was over the summer. I've also been going to the gym in the morning at the school uh, with Mr. Bunnell and all of them and prioritizing all of that and time management in one day when you wake up at 5.30 and your day starts then that your day ends at nine. It's really important you have time to get your work done, get your school work done and still become a leader of your team. <laughs> Successfully maintaining these activities has prepared me for my future plans. I plan on attending Lincoln Tech Institute, which is up in East Windsor uh, for welding. <clears throat> my time at Thomaston has given me many uh, opportunity, opportunities and has challenged me in many ways so that I believe that I will be well prepared for my time uh, up in East Windsor. Thank you again for the honor of being nominated Rotary Student of the Month. And I can't thank you all enough. Thank you.
Thank you. We have our December 2022 Students of the Month. Claire Saunders, Brooke Bodwin, Gracie Marble, Brianna Belanger, Kayla Capusta, Adriana Rocco, Riley Crahan, Ella Hallway, Hudson Atwood, Ella Thebalt, Haley Peck, Coraline Novikowski, and Ella Novikowski. And they were honored at the breakfast in December. So congratulations to all of you. And at this time, I would like to call up our staff spotlight for January, Mrs. Michelle Hope. Michelle Pope recently transferred into the role of special education teacher after serving as a math teacher at the high school since August of 1998. Ms. Pope has impressed her colleagues and supervisors with her incredible determination and outstanding performance in her new role. Ms. Pope is an exceptional teacher who makes strong connections with her students. She has invested time in many complicated facets of special education. As a co-teacher in both mathematics and humanities classes, Ms. Pope supports both the students on her caseload and her new center school colleagues. Ms. Pope's organization, dedication, and sense of humor are appreciated by all who work with her. The People Services Department and Thomaston Center School are all the richer because of Michelle. We are so happy that she is part of our team. Congratulations. We have no presentations tonight, and we will segue right into our student representatives report. All students came back refreshed and refreshed the semester will begin at the end of January. However, it change if there's any more snow days. So, we have spirits and our to start half your classes that will begin in the new semester. For clubs, all clubs are working on fundraising and events for next year. Student Council is holding a lock in where proceeds go to the Page Jim Batten Memorial Scholarship. THS is very excited and actively trying to bring fun events and activities to our school. For athletics, winter sports are well underway with basketball, indoor track, wrestling, and cheer all being offered. Boys basketball has two wins, four losses. Girls basketball has four wins, three losses. Rapping has just happened where the boys and Boys and girls basketball teams both won against Terryville. All sports help increase student morale and bring excitement to the winter season. For Friday before break, however, the cancellation of school of this event till February. We participate in our CAS Middle Level Leadership Conference on Friday, January 13th, and Senior Capstone Conference. As we said earlier, we held on January 27th. Thank you. Uh, moving into my report, um, Ed Advance has been quite active lately, so I'd like to give you an update. Um, they purchased the East School in Torrington, and after some extensive upgrades and innovations, this school will offer space for the Head Start program, the Alternative High School program, and special education programs. And Thomaston Savings is partnering with Ed Advance uh, for the financing on this project. And the U.S. Department of Education awarded Ed Advance an $8.7 million grant which is going to be used for mental health and social and emotional learning resources. Um, some of the programs 
that are going to directly impact our district are a program that to help students with vaping issues and vaping education. And they are also developing a sixth grade unit to deal with social and emotional issues that will be offered to all districts in um, at advances purview. Uh, two technology initiatives that I'd like to highlight are seminars being offered to help districts with the science of reading waivers. And they're also offering training on a new technology where um, students can go into Google and search out an answer. And then this new technology takes that answer and can transfer it into whatever form a student wants. So if they'd like to take that answer and turn it into a poem or a song or an essay even, this new uh, um, technology will do that. So they are offering training on uh, how to combat that and as this is a new um, issue that's developed across the country, um, Ed Advanced has gotten right into that, which is a great resource for our district and the other districts. So that's just a little update on what Ed Advanced is offering us, in addition to the other training that they normally provide for us. Um, we have our progress report on our goals. And um, you'll notice that the contract for the superintendent is listed here. Um, it's here because although we approved this back at the end of June, um, I neglected to get her contract updated and signed. So I apologize for that. And that's why it is here under my report. So we will be signing that to commit for another three years. And I will turn this over to Mrs. Koss for her report. Thank you. Beginning of my report is correspondence, but I do want to note the last two on the list. They're letters that we sent to the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen, inviting them to our budget workshop at the end of the month. Uh, the correspondence that you'll see a lot of, mostly from the State Department of Ed, but you'll see others um, going back and forth, relate to the reading, the K-3 reading legislation waiver that uh, Roxy was just talking about. We are doing a lot of um, good work with Ed Advance on that, and we will be applying for the waiver. Um, under reports, we have our COVID positivity and vaccination uh, rate report. There have been two missing reports uh, between the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday. And we just received those today, so I did add those this afternoon. Um, and then we have our uh, center school gym floor project update. Uh, I believe we can go to one more slide, Sue, so we can see that. So on the slide that's in front of you, <coughs> There's information related to the gym floor project. We had engineers uh, from tie and bond come to uh, center school. They did what was called a core boring, which was um, they selected certain areas in and around the gymnasium to bore down below the surface to determine um, if there's a water source that's regular and standard, where it's located, et cetera, because we were getting so much water up through the tongue and groove flooring they believed that there would be a great deal of water at a very high uh, water table level. And they had determined that it's at about 2.7 feet uh, below the uh, foundation. So that tells you it's very high. It's typically um, deeper than four feet. So we're quite high there. So what they asked us to do was do more digging. And so during the Christmas break, the Department of Public Works worked with our uh, staff and they dug um, around the outside of the building in particular areas as recommended by the engineer. And from that digging, the engineers were able to complete this report, which they sent to us. What this report says basically is we need to do some mitigating inside the gym and outside of the gym. Outside, they're uh, suggesting a curtain drain system around three sides of the gym. So all sides of the gym would be covered with the exception of the front area of the building. And then um, they're also asking for a uh, water mitigation under the floor um, on the interior. It's uh, under $200,000 at their estimates for this project to be completed, uh, but we would still have to go out to bid, but they provided us with the specifications that we need to go out to bid. And they gave us, like I said, that generic cost estimate. So what the next step is going to be uh, tonight is uh, to 
ask the board to direct me so that we have it on record to request funds for the Thomason Center School gym floor project from the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen if need be. I've already been um, in touch with, with Tracy Decker on this matter, as well as the head of the Board of Finance, George Seaborn, to let them know that it was coming. And once the report did arrive, we shared it with them to let them know um, what the estimated cost would be. Right now, we don't have any assurance that these costs will be covered by insurance. But what we are hoping is that some of it will be. Until we know, I wanted to make sure I brought it to the attention of the Board of Finance so that if we did need funding, the worst case scenario would be before them as early as we could get it to them. So I will be going before the Board of Finance tomorrow, but what I'm asking from this board is to take the action that I'm suggesting on the agenda so that I can bring to them the draft minutes tomorrow and say, look, the board is asking me to come to you. Well, to direct Superintendent Cost to request funds for the Thomaston Center School Gymnasium Project from the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen. Second. Are there any questions? Be able to be done because I have not had gym all year, and the basketball teams have nowhere to practice. And these poor children have been through enough, and I hope that it can be done at least before the next school year begins. So the timing of when this could be completed would be the timing on the funding as well. So when I go before the Board of Finance tomorrow, I will know more as to how quickly funding could be acquired if it's not being covered by insurance. There's also uh, a meeting on Friday where they're coming, the, our, our insurance uh, company is coming on Friday to look at Black Rock School. I intend to ask him um, when we can meet about center school so that we can get an idea of what they will cover there as well. Um, I would venture to believe there is slim chance that the gym will open this year and that this project will be done before the school year is over uh, because the curtain drain would require a great deal of digging, although it could happen while the children are in school. The um, under the gym floor uh, system could also be installed while the children are in school. So we wouldn't have to wait until the summer. It would just have to wait until we're funded. The first step, though, after going to the Board of Finance tomorrow would be to put a bid out and we would have to post the bid publicly for whatever the legal duration is, then we would have to accept bids and open them up in a public setting, and then we would pick the contractors. And the way that we're trying to expedite it is instead of putting out the bid as one giant project, we're going to put it out as two separate bids. So that if you're the type of contractor that can do both the interior and the exterior work, you can bid on both. If you're not that type of a contractor, which the likelihood you know could be, you know construction type company could do the outside, but they may not be able to do the inside. So that will allow for more companies to to bid in, and that would give us more flexibility in cost, but it'll also give us more flexibility in timeline, because we would put in the specs when we would want to see it done. So right now I don't have a firm timeline for you, Sarah, but the goal here is to get us back into that gym. Um, once we start digging around that gym. We lose parking space and bus access too in the back. So we're trying also to time that so that we don't blow up other types of outdoor access, especially as it might be warming up in the spring where we want to use that back area. Gym is still being taught. It's just not being taught at all close to what it resembles in the gymnasium. Yeah, no, and I... Um, for what she is doing with what she has, but I don't think it's fair to her nor the students that, you know, longer than a year. And to uh, your point about what the rec department can do for access, what the insurance company said to us when we had our initial meeting uh, was that any normal business that we would have done in our gym that cannot be done and therefore yields a cost because we have to rent from other gym, that would be covered under insurance. And that was shared with the selectmen and it was also shared with the rec commission, rec department uh, director. So if they know if they have to secure a gym and pay for it, it's not a final one, but if they have to secure a gym and pay for it or pay for someone to mop the floor in that gym, that would be covered under our insurance policy because they can't use our gym and they typically do. 
So if um, if you're hearing any um, clamorings about not having gym access, yeah, they, they have rented. Um, like coaches $80. have rented our space for eighty dollars. So so coaches who go through the rec commission, if it's a rec commission program, they should be talking to the rec commission okay. about what they're doing because if they're renting because they can't get access to our gym, then that would be something that's covered under insurance. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving on. Okay, so the next item is the Black Rock uh, School Blue Wing flood update. Uh, I kind of gave it to you already. We have our insurance representative coming to Black Rock School on Friday morning. He will be doing a walkthrough of the area that was affected, which is the entire Blue Wing and he will be um, just reassessing the situation. There had been an issue with accessing a document that was sent to him that was regularly being updated. It was a Google doc, so it was constantly live and his system did not allow him to see the live updates. So he was in the dark because of his system. He thought that what was sent to him initially was all that we were claiming. And he received a message saying, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. And he said, well, you haven't asked for anything in a while. And we brought him up to speed. So he's coming in on Friday to make sure that it's um, that what we're asking for is uh, clearly documented with Kerma. Because like I said, he was unable to get the updates. So we gave everything to him in hard copy. Uh, the next part of uh, my report includes the administrative reports and the enrollment report. And I'd like to highlight the enrollment projection report. We get this periodically. So on the next slide, you'll see uh, we have two slides that follow. One is showing our projected enrollment and, and how they, they calculate it with um, the different colors, white being children that we know already exist in the district and the light blue being those that uh, they anticipate being born or entering into the school district at some point in time. But I wanted you to see this because at the very bottom of that light blue and white rectangle on the uh, the lower right hand side, it shows a 6% increase over the next 10 years. Now 6% may sound like a lot or a little depending on, on what side of the fence you are on with that number, but it's uh, enough students, it's about 39, uh, enough students that could impact a whole grade level like we saw with kindergarten last year and first grade this year, or it could be peppered throughout, depending. So on the next slide, Sue, is the overall growth that's being projected. So we see a little bit of stabilizing um, this coming year and next year, and then we start to grow slowly over time where our public schools will be back into the 800s. And that would not include the students that we have going to magnets or uh, vocational educational schools, uh, technical high schools. Um, but it, it would impact us enough where we should be looking at it, thinking about it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take a little bit of a deeper dive into this data and see if it's going to be a particular grade level in the future, or if it is gonna be a peppering so that we can plan accordingly for staff. What I don't want to do is hire staff that we eventually won't need. Um, I would rather try to plan things out, but I would say based on my, my first look at the enrollment information, we may see slightly larger class sizes over the next 10 years, which is very good news because when I arrived here 10 years ago, they were claiming we were going to have a 20% loss. Uh, next item of note in my report, is under contracts. We are uh, we have entered into an uh, agreement with the Litchfield Board of Ed, Region Six Board of Ed, Region Fourteen Board of Ed to uh, allow for a lacrosse team. So we will be sharing that team. Um, we're very happy about that. Uh, that we had to sign this year in order for it to be able to be established for next year. Did the CIAC approve that co-op? It is a, a CIAC. Um, co-op that we're asking for. I don't have any um, information from CIAC if it's been approved. I just know that we have all gotten together and now we have to wait to hear from them. Okay, because the contract stated that it had to be 
they were deciding in December. So that's what Chris is going to tell me. So I don't, I don't oversee the contract. We're going to have Litchfield and Regents Mix oversee it because they have the majority of the players. So once we know for sure, then our students can participate. But until then, you have to sign something in order for CIAC to contemplate you. Mm -hmm. And I think they have a club too. So Litchfield has a club. Yeah. Thank so you. We're very excited. You're welcome. I know of one student um, at this point who's very interested in joining that team. So if it if it helps that one, that's great. If it encourages more, that's even better. We have no new grants uh, on, on this month's agenda. We do have um, a denied fundraiser, and I want to just clarify, we don't deny very often, but this is a fundraiser related to a program that's grant funded. So I ask that they seek other funding and um, either through the grant money or through other um, avenues other than fundraising the way that they were asking. And the response that I received back was they were asking for a waiver on certain regulations that wouldn't allow them to spend the grant money the way they wanted to, which could open up that grant money to be spent for this purpose. And then I have a personnel, an item under personnel of note. Helen Guerrero, our pupil services secretary, uh, is retiring March 7th of 2023. She um, has worked 35 years for the Thomaston Board of Ed, and um, she takes away uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of um, experience, and um, I know I will miss her. If I had a question about the history or the past, uh, she was very frank and honest about it and gave me some really good insights as I would plan for different um, changes or just simply analyzing a situation. She had that information. She also served a good long time on the negotiating committees for the uh, non-certified union. So she's had a very integral role in our district on, on different levels. So I just wanted to make note of that, that she, um, has spent a great deal of time with us and we will miss her. So I ask at this time that we vote to acknowledge uh, my notification of personnel as listed here on the agenda. Rui Eldridge, I vote to acknowledge the superintendent's notification of personnel, specifically new hires, transfers, retirements, resignations, renewals, stipends for policy 4112, 4212. Personnel certified, non certified, appointment and conditions of employment as presented. Any questions? I just have a question um, regarding resignations for 2022. Did you get many exit interviews? And um, does the board have access to those? Francine speaking. So when we get an interview back, mm -hmm. it's the board with the board. So not getting one means we haven't gotten one. But what I can do is on Thursday, when our HR person is back in, I'll ask her if she has received any and we'll get them scanned right over because the board is supposed to see all of those exit interviews. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. We had some family medical leave uh, requests. We had no new inter interns um, or student teachers at the time of this resume. Uh, field trip. We have an out of state field trip that the Board of Education must take action on tonight. It is the uh, Broadway, uh, Broadway trip for the drama club. It is either going to be on March 15th or the 24th of May, depending on um, availability and it will be uh, to go see Wicked. So I ask at this time that the vote, the board vote to accept the Broadway field trip as presented. Will the eligible to vote to accept the approved the Broadway field trip as presented? Any questions? Just a comment, item number six on the form does not have a destination. Mm -hmm. We asked why um, the uh, the actual show wasn't listed, but you know we don't ask for the show; we just ask for the field trip. So in New York City, so I yeah, was, was it's Broadway. Broadway I think was implied. Yes, so we didn't ask further before bringing it to you. <laughs> Any other question? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. So moved. Okay.
Our committee reports. Would you like to present on the budget audit? Absolutely. This is Francine reporting. We had our budget audit committee meeting on Wednesday last week. Our fact projection for the school year uh, for this plan was given during that time. Uh, we are looking right now at a deficit of over $200,000. That is um, due to a combination of factors, but the majority of the funding comes from uh, the need to pay for an out of district tuition that we were talking about last year when we were planning the budget, but that we are typically as a board discouraged to put in for until we know for sure that someone is outplaced. So knowing that we were anticipating it, um, had we put it in, we wouldn't have been in this uh, situation. So I froze the budget more than a month ago and we are uh, tightening our belts in uh, multitude of ways. There's a, a further salary analysis that will be completed so that hopefully we can get that number down a little bit. And we're hoping that if we continue to have this type of weather where we don't need snow plowing, that could offset because we wouldn't be spending that line as much so we could put that funding toward um, the deficits that we have. Um, but I think it's important that you know that we have our first projection if you wanted to look at the details. So I ask that the board vote to accept and approve the business and finance report and expenditures as presented this evening. Rui Eldridge vote to accept and approve the business and finance report and expenditures for policy 3432, 3433, business non-instructional operations, budget and expense report annual financial statement as presented for December 2022. Are there any questions? I do want to point out that it's not just the one outplacement. Like I said, it's a, a bunch of things. We also have, remember, we had put in for a per gallon rate for oil and diesel. And when we finally locked in, it was much higher. So we were already at a deficit with oil and diesel as well. So that did contribute uh, quite a bit as well to this uh, deficit that we're looking at now. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, you're gonna give the policy committee? We have a presentation today um, from Jessica. Um, yeah, oh, that's what I said. Anyway, um, and we're looking for um, the policy that she um, presented to a factory next week, uh, next month. I can continue to edit and this is a major policy to us. My microphone hates me. I see 3135.551 do a second read and will become an action item next month. Okay. No one has any questions on policy. I entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. There a second? Anybody? Oh, Campbell yeah, second. All those in favor? Rex. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? I was just going to ask it earlier, but we kept moving along. It's, it was under your report, Rexy. Yep. 9.2 um, for our goals for the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. um, the district events listed, are those separate from the Board of Education meetings and committee meetings? I'm just, I'm just trying to keep track of like we're being listed in attendance for for those meetings, but it specifically says district events. So is that like the school the school play or the band concerts or or the sporting events? So I just wanted to, to be clear on what what is considered the district events under our goal for the Board of Education. So anything that's not in the schedule is what I'm considering in the calculation. So like tonight going to the meeting that was being hosted by the admin would be a district event. Okay. Going to the ice cream social in the fall was a district event. That's how I was seeing it. So it's not specifically school events. Well, the school events are on the board roster of meetings. Do you see it differently? Well, I just wanted to be clear so that when we go to look at, you know, 
our board goals and how we're meeting them. We do get certain invitations from Michalina, but not for everything, right? So yeah. say for example, the school play, I know there was at least four or five board members there, but it's not captured in that data. So that, that's kind of what I'm asking. Got what you're saying. Okay. So yeah. I was going to yes. say the school oh, wait, play. Be the, yes. So if you look on in every row, it'll say what the event is and the date of the event. So like for the play, the play was a thousand days. Yes. So we could have had everyone there, but some on Thursday, some early on Saturday, and some later on Saturday. But then we would have gotten a head count and we would have added that to that list. Okay. And then like something like tonight, for example, while I was there, I made my head count of how many board members were there and I'll report that to make leaner. Or when we have our policy meeting, I report how many people come to policy or to budget. So any any event that the board is invited to, there's someone that we touch at that event and say, hey, how many board members were there? Like the uh, the breakfasts. So well, the breakfast. And that brings up another one of my just comments in general about some of the district events not being um, accommodating for board members. They're accommodating for students and staff, but not necessarily parents and board members. So I just don't want us to be, um, yeah penalized for that yeah i don't know well, we're, we're looking at yeah. the response and i respond to sync well when i go oh, for a request so, for 2024 so it's hard for me to respond that i can go with that so that's there's two different um well, it's a data that we're collecting we assume that the responses should always total nine but we assume like say for a residency hearing the attendance should have been more than three. It could be more than three, right. but we only need three for such a thing. So we would divide that, thanks to Marie, who brought that up to me a few months back, that it would be unfair to make that a nine because we only ever need three. So the committees, for example, going to a policy committee meeting, we know how many people are on policy. We don't divide that by nine. Okay. Yes, are always divided by nine because if everyone's invited, it should be assumed that everyone answers. But if it's showing up, we're trying to be fair and say, well, there are only this many committee members. Why would we divide it by nine? Right. So it's like how many are showing up. And that's why uh, I don't know if I'm familiar with that column, but if you were to go into the big spreadsheet, I can say how many, not just the percentage. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So there are two different things being collected, responses and did you show up? So you may not have and we don't put down Beth and Sarah, we say five or seven. And it is hard to respond to what Heather said to events in 2024. <laughs> but we could put maybe. You're right, Marie. So you're right. We could put maybe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everybody.